Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. Today, I'm going to throw another bolo out here. We'll start with just a quick story. We were at an antique mall. Uh, this is years ago, probably 10, 15 years ago. And the wife and I found a table that we really liked the design of. It was a 40s, I think it's a 1949 Saturn-style table. All the furniture that went with it, all the chairs and all the padding on the sides of the table were trashed out. So we actually got the table dirt cheap. It was like 50 bucks for six chairs, all the tables, captain's chairs, everything else. The chrome and everything was immaculate, but the fabric was gone. So we delved into fabric. And again, this is like 15 years ago. Ever since then, we realized that there is a horrendous amount of money to be made in fabric. We've been selling fabric ever since... Sometimes, in some cases, you can even buy, like, sheets and cut those up into yards, actual square yards, and sell them that way to vintage sheets, vintage curtains. All of that kind of stuff sells for a horrendous amount of money, like bark cloth and things along that line. We're going to cut over there right now, and I'm just going to show you the high, and I do mean high potential for fabric. So here we are at fabric. Fabric comes in all different kinds of styles and such forth. Vintage fabric is mostly what I personally purchase and mess with. It sells very easily. In some cases, we've sold a yard, one single yard of fabric for 150 bucks. That's a legitimate price on fabric. I can find it fairly often. I can find it at clearance wholesale. I can RA fabric. Um, I can literally find it even at antique malls, thrift stores, across the board. There's quite a few thrift stores around here that get fabric quite often, and I do mean quite often. So I've been messing with fabric for a long time. First one here is just a more common one. This is a Ralph Lauren. This is just something that you're going to expect to find in some places when you actually do this kind of stuff for a while. Stuff like this will actually still show up in like uh, fabric shops still to this day that have been sitting in their back inventory. They're in clearance sections. I check every clearance section at every fabric store I've ever been to. Um, and usually I can find a few there. Um, but the best places, as I said, are like um, thrift stores and things along that line. Um, antique malls, garage sales, specialty auctions where they just auction off uh, a company that may have had a ton of fabric in there. So like an upholstery shop would be a real good place to source some of this stuff. Real key stuff here to sell. And again, these go up to insane amounts of money. Some yards of fabric can go for a couple thousand dollars. So I'm just going to show you some quick here. Get your interest peaked in this. It's something that I could find at least several of these every single week of my life. Many times I can run into a store and there might be 15, 20, 30, even 100 bolts of fabric that are marked down clearance or at a thrift place or something along that line. I sometimes will buy them all, usually five bucks a bolt. Sometimes it's by the yard. It just depends on what you're buying and where you're buying it from. But this one here is 150 bucks, basically. Next one here is vintage. Now, vintage is what I want. Vintage is what I look for. Um, just know your dimensions somewhat. Know what a yard is. A yardstick is 3 feet, 36 inches. A square yard is 36 by 36 for the most part. There are some wider uh, lengths of fabric, so it just depends on how the bolt was actually made. Um, sometimes a yard would be the width of the bolt, which might be 56 inches, or even more than that, 80 inches. And then a yard would be 3 feet long of that same fabric. So just know your fabric a little bit. Uh, this is a real good example. This is a Mickey Mouse vintage, uh, just a typical thing that you would find. It's not even a ton of fabric. Um, you can make quite a few things with this. That's the key to this. This sold for $700. Not insane prices, not crazy prices at all. Another Disney one. This is 80s and 90s. This is 2.8 meters. Um, where are they from? Why would they put it from the outside of the U.S.? So this is a foreign-made one. Um, they don't sell as well as the U.S. versions. Most of the time, they're actually marked with, I don't know if I see it. Yeah, copyrights. Some of them have, like, production stampings and things like that on them. $270 on this. So I buy chunks of fabric all the time. Next one here is Charlie the Cat. This is a known one. This almost always sells for 100 plus just for this cat, the front and back. And then you can make a stuffed animal out of this. There's a bunch of these on eBay. So again, all of these I'm showing you have comps to compare them to, especially this one. There's probably a dozen or more of this exact Charlie the Cat design on. And this isn't the only one that had this sort of design. There's dogs and all kinds of different things that made them as well, too. Smurfs and, and Ewoks and advertising pieces also. So $192 with 11 bids on this. This is just for one instance of this actual design on the fabric. So 
perfect example. The Balt Anna, this is a French cut velvet. It's an upholstery fabric. Another thing that you should know is the difference between upholstery, Naga hide, leather, um, and all those kind of different types of fabric because you, you will really need to know that when selling them to advertise the exact type of material. The upholstery fabric's usually thicker. Uh, it borders more on the lines of a tapestry, and tapestry fabric is outrageously expensive even if you buy it from a discount place. So that's something to look for, these higher-end ones on these. This one sold for $570 for six yards. This was probably basically broken down into enough to do a chair is usually the, the means that they do these by. They'll break them down into groupings to do them that way. Be no sense in selling a small amount of this unless you're doing it for pillows or something along that line for upholstery. So my father did upholstery in cars. So he had upholstery sewing machines. He used to do like... Um, racing car seats and interiors and things and redo vintage cars so i've been around sewing machines and sewing and fabrics for most of my life some of the work i did for art wise i used to do signs and airbrush work were for upholstery businesses that um, we knew the owners of and things like that too so i've actually been messing with fabric for a very long time we do our own halloween costumes which we do so here in house so this is a really good area this is a super high dollar area Nowhere else can you turn huge amounts of basically just nothing, just blank fabric into some decent money. These mostly sell real quick if you get the right kind of fabric. Now, if it's not vintage and it's like a, a flooded market or a single solid color, it's just not worth selling. You want the intricate, the designer patterns and colors and patterns and things along that line. Here's a P. Kaufman um, Lady Broke uh, Licorice Black. Uh, this is just the design name. They call these all kinds of names. They're just throwing in names to get you interested in the fabric. You can see the design and the markings on them. This is literally what you look for on most of these. There will usually be that marking on most of the newer, the, the really nice fabric has that on there. There will be a copyright in the whole works. I pick up this type of stuff all the time. If they're like Middle Eastern designs or, or um, Asian-inspired designs, Chinese images and things like that, they sell ex incredibly well as do Western and other uh, genres and uh, things along that line, too. So this one went for $628. Just another example, just a different style. This is five and a half yards, $600. One piece, uncut, marked on the side again. That's what you're looking for, marked on the side one. So you can tell what they are. You can label them better. Next one is a Charles Eames dot. Now, this says mid-mod century. It does look like that. And they actually show, uh, I guess this is where it's from. It's from 1947, $109 a yard. This is 10 yards. That's quite a bit of this material. That's the manufactured suggested retail price, MSRP. 595 is what it's sold for. Here's a bolt. As I said, bolt is the term. 56 inches is the width, and that's typical. You'll see width, and then when they do out a yard, they will count it out 36 inches that way. So it doesn't matter how wide it is for most people. Um, it's just by the yard how long it is. And this one's huge. It's 548 inches. Island of Palm. It's an interesting design, just as I said. All of these inspired ones go very well. $305. Next one's a newer one. This is Mary Jane Butters. And again, it's going to be marked down here. Motifabrics.com is one I see marked on many things. This is a typical type of thing that you would find. 250 bucks. it's 15 yards. That's quite a bit of fabric. Something like this, it's going to be hard to price, but if they're cheap enough, I will pretty much always take a chance. 25 bucks for the bolt. Dollar or two or three dollars a yard, I would probably take a shot at it, even at 15 yards to buy the whole thing. It just depends. This one's more unique than most. It's got a pop-up camper. Um, that's what's going to push this and sell this. The the kitschiness, the retro pink of this material. 250 bucks, basically. Next one here is a vintage western themed one. Uh, it's actually nine yards. It's flannel. Flannel goes very well. These vintage flannel patterns, two hundred ninety-five dollars. Again, I do find this. You can find these at garage sales, auctions, thrift stores, wherever you go. Fabric does show up. Church sales are really good for this as well too, because sometimes businesses will donate stuff like this to a church sale to help them make a profit for the church. So. Next one here is less than two yards, 44 inches across. So basically it's 72 inches, almost 72 inches long. That would be two yards, basically. 60s, 70s, flocked stripe, interesting pattern. 
Um, it's got like some laciness between it. It's kind of like a cheesecloth pattern. Delicate. This would be something probably someone would make curtains out of. Uh, just rather interesting pattern. $889. Next one here is a 1966 Jack Lenore Larson. Um, let's see if you can see the marking. Uh, yeah, right here. Again, vintage ones with marking are even better from my personal opinion. Handprint. I don't know if that means that it was hand done or not. It's just an awesome pattern on this one here. It's seven plus yards, $710. This is a thicker, heavier fabric as well, too. Now, the next one here is bark cloth. Bark cloth is thick. It's almost like a canvas almost uh, in nature, in my personal opinion. They're usually rough, not very soft. Um, this is just a typical type you would find. This is perfect for this era, 30s, 40s, and 50s. Single panels of drapes are what I usually find these in, and they always sell. You see they listed them in two individual panels, 595 bucks for each panel. So I always look in the drape section, and I always look drapes, curtains, and sheets. Any vintage fabric like that, I can cut off the edges. If there are curtains, I will leave them as they are. Or if they're lined, in some cases, I will take the lining off. Spend, you know, 20 minutes or so to carefully unstitch them. We have seam rippers just to do that type of thing here as well, too. Next one is another flocked one. Basically, it's a little fuzzy, I guess you could say, for flocking. Pictures aren't so great on this one. It's uh, semi-transparent, obviously. It's a lacy style. Uh, it's four yards of this fabric, 510 bucks, 10 bits. This stuff goes like mad, I'm telling you. Vintage fabric always sells for us. It never sits around in here very long at all. This is one of those quick flip items. Another uh, vintage Jack Lenore Larson. I showed you his label before. You'll see, uh, let's see, I'm pretty sure it probably, yeah, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure it's marked on here. Most of them are. The Aurora you see on the bottom is actually the pattern. Perfect example. You can look up uh, Jack Lenore Larson, and you will find tons of different uh, information, as well as doing just a Chrome search. 460 bucks, 15 bids. Another uh, section of fabric. This is another dot one. Sometimes they say uh, country of origin. You can see they're holding them up for curtains. Perfect example. This would really go in a vintage 30s, 40s, 50s kitchen or bathroom, something along that line. 365 bucks. Another one here. Uh, this is a more elaborate, uh, nice vintage. I'm not sure if you would call this bark cloth or not. More along the lines of that, um, it probably is. It's hard to say. Some of these are actually hand-embroidered patterns on here. Some are done in machines and such forth as well, too. Again, it's a curtain. This is a single curtain panel, 82 inches by 54 inches, $845. So again, anybody not thinking that fabric alone is worth some money is crazy. When I go to estate sales, I always check out their linen cabinets every time. If there's curtains hanging on the wall and they're worth money, I will offer them for the curtains on the wall. Anything to get the curtains in this bark cloth like this material here. It's linen, so that's usually what bark cloth kind of reminds me of is a, a rough linen of some sort. Again, it is fairly rough. Another perfect example, it has a similar pattern to bark cloth, but this isn't anywhere near as thick. This is going to be a softer fabric than bark cloth. And the last one's a perfect example of bark cloth. It's a geometric pattern, mid, mod century, Eames era, uh, mod fab. This is perfect. Boomerang, geometric. This is a known stylistic pattern. Um, they may look different than some other ones, but the boomerang image has been used over and over again, even on tables, um, pottery, and things along that line, too. So this is just a touch on fabric. I could spend hours talking about the different types of fabric, uh, better explanation on where to find it and things like that. There's just so many sources for fabric, believe it or not. New fabric, old fabric, it doesn't really matter. Even fabric that was made into something. In some cases, I will buy vintage clothing and sell it for fabric cutoff panels for people who do doll houses, um, recreations, and doll clothing and things along that line. There's so many opportunities for this. Even some of the vintage fabric will be sold to crafters who will do covers to scrapbooks or like fond memory books and things along that line. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there you go. That's another item you should be looking for. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.